So let's meet some of the key players that make all of our lives easier, whether they be business, as in the producers who make the products, or a retailer that sells mainly to consumers. A retailer is a channel intermediary that sells mainly to consumers. So B to C, as in business to consumers. Merchant wholesalers, they buy goods from manufacturers and resell them to businesses, government agencies, and other wholesalers or retailers. Merchant wholesalers receives and takes title to goods, stores them in its own warehouse, and later ships them. Merchant wholesalers are likely to go direct to the source as in the producers or manufacturers of products. They tend to buy in bulk, so they'll buy large or mass quantities. In their warehouse, they'll break it down into smaller, more manageable quantities to sell to retailers. For example, imagine a dairy wholesaler. They would go to various farms and buy hundreds and thousands of liters of milk every day. They would then reduce this to maybe a thousand liters of milk and on sell it to retailers like Coles and Woolworths. The third group of people are agents and brokers. They are wholesaling intermediaries who facilitate the sale of a product to end users by representing the retailers, wholesalers or manufacturers. The difference between merchant wholesalers and agents and brokers? Agents and brokers do not take title to goods, whereas merchant wholesalers do take title to goods, which basically means agents and brokers at no point does a product that they're selling belong to them. They're just helping the producer sell the product to the end consumer or even to other retailers. Whereas a merchant wholesaler is going to buy the stock themselves and then redistribute the stock most likely in smaller quantities to other retailers who are interested in stocking the product. Merchant wholesalers get a huge discount because they're buying in very large quantities and the process of breaking it down into smaller quantities or smaller units that's where they end up making their money whereas agents and brokers will get a percentage of the sale that takes place. There are three main channel functions performed by intermediaries that we're looking at, and these are broken down into further sub-functions. The first one, transactional function. This can be contacting, promoting, negotiating, as well as risk-taking. Every business deal is a risk. Think about the thousands or even tens of thousands of products that any retailer sells. For example, Kohl's, Woolies, JB Hi-Fi, Harvey Norman, Good Guys. They have so many different products. Each of those products is a bit of a risk. So for the retailers, the transactional function they're performing is contacting and promoting these products, negotiating deals with the producers, and taking a risk on each of the items. I mean, what happens if they don't sell? Logistical function. This can be physical distribution, storing, and sorting. Think about the hundreds of stores across Australia, or even thousands of stores across the world. Each of these stores would be buying in some larger quantities and then storing it in their warehouse or even inside their actual store, but also breaking it down into smaller units or smaller groups for customers to buy. For example, Harvey Norman or Good Guys might have a thousand TV per stores. But for us individual consumer, we just want to buy one TV, maybe two, but most likely just one. And the facilitation function, researching and financing. For any product to be available at 
and in store, there's some decent amount of research that is conducted to work out, will this product be viable? Would our particular customers be interested in purchasing this product? And this also means financing. A lot of time when business deals are done, there may be an initial deposit with a 30, 60, or even a 120 day credit period, depending on how they've negotiated it. However, quite often, especially when you're working with manufacturers, retailers or distributors may give them an upfront payment to secure the deal. So for example, we'll pay you 50% now and then 50% at delivery. For smaller businesses or manufacturing businesses, this can be the difference between staying in business or being in financial trouble. So every time a product goes through an intermediary, the price jumps up because of the functions that an intermediary performs. For example, direct channel from producer to consumer, normally there's good discounts to be had here because we're buying it directly from source. Traditionally, farmers markets are supposed to be kind of cheap. Prices there are fantastic for fruits and vegetables. Now, if you haven't been there, once all the lockdowns lifted, definitely go check it out. Compare the prices that you pay at, say, Woolies or Coles, which are retailers, compared to going direct to consumer. The next one is a retailer channel. So this is where the producer sells to the retailer, then the retailer on sells it to the consumer. The third one is a wholesale channel. So producer to wholesaler. Wholesaler will buy in bulk like really large quantities. They'll break it down further for retailers, and then retailers will break it down to individual units that we will buy. For example, with petrol. So petrol is produced by, let's say companies like Kuwait Oil Company or Aramco, which is the oil company in Saudi Arabia. They will sell the crude oil to companies like BP, who will refine it who will then on-sell it to retailers like United or through their own BP service stations, who will eventually sell it to us, the consumer. And every time it goes through someone's hand or every time an intermediary gets involved, the price of the product jumps up. The last type, agent broker channel. So producers who sells to agents and brokers who may find unique wholesalers who are interested in the product, who will then sell it to retailers and then eventually us consumers. Like look at Sriracha sauce. It is so, so expensive. The reason for it is that this product is more of a speciality product. So people are looking for it. However, it doesn't sell in huge quantities, say compared to Heinz ketchup, as a result of which agents or brokers would have been approached by the producer or they would have sought out the producer to say, hey, we can open up new markets for you in foreign countries. They would have gone to trade shows and events where they would have met other wholesalers and product tested it or displayed the product to them. The wholesalers would have got interested and started stocking the product and then promoted that to retailers. And then eventually a retailer like Coles and Woolies would promote the product to us and the consumer. And every step of the way, the price of the product goes up because someone had to work for it. So this is why when you look at the online world and you go direct to consumer, online is so much cheaper in saying that if you're walking through a Coles, a Woolies, a JB Hi-Fi, a Harvey Norman, any physical store that you already have a pre-existing relationship with, you're more likely to trust a product, even though you've never used it nor experienced it yourself, because you trust the retailer. So this is where there's pros and cons for both approaches.